Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Pregna Bazin, a consultant anthropologist and director in Spire Analytics. Today I am going to speak on the module Ecosystem and Ecosensitivity from the paper Ecological Anthropology, Cultural and Biological Dimensions. The learning objectives of this module are pretty simple. We will first explain or provide information about the ecosystem ecology. The second one is to elucidate the kind of ecosystems and structure and the function of an ecosystem. The third is to understand and study the concept of ecosensitivity, ecologically sensitive area and demarcating ecologically sensitive area. Let's start with the introduction of this module. One of the most striking features of the Earth's biota is its extraordinary diversity. Estimated to include about 10 million different species. One of the most conspicuous aspects of contemporary global change is the rapid decline of this diversity in many ecosystems. The decline is not limited to increased rates of species extinction, but includes losses in genetic and functional diversity across population, community, ecosystem, landscape and global scales. The term biodiversity refers collectively to all these aspects of biotic diversity. The wide-ranging decline in biodiversity results largely from the habitat modification and destruction, increased rates of invasion by deliberately or accidentally introduced the non-native species, over-exploitation and other human-caused impacts. On a global scale, even at the lowest estimated current extinct rate, about half of all species could be extinct within the next 100 years. Such an event would be similar in magnitude to five mass extinctions events in the 3.5 billion year history of life on the Earth. On local and regional scales, biodiversity declines are already pronounced in many areas, especially where natural ecosystems have been converted to croplands, timber plantations, aquaculture and other managed ecosystems. The diversity of these managed ecosystems is often low and species composition very different compared with those of the natural systems that have been replaced now. What are the consequence, consequences of such a decline in biodiversity and how might they affect the human welfare? The Earth's living organism contrib contribute to human welfare in a number of ways. The first, humans derive from them goods and products essential for life, including food, medicine, industrial products, genetic resources for crop breeding, and natural pest control services. Such benefits can be viewed as the market values of biodiversity because they are readily tied to our economy and often can be assigned a dollar value in the marketplace. The second use to this is the biodiversity has non-market values that can be expressed in such as knowledge, aesthetics, existence and other values. These non-market values of biodiversity are difficult to quantify but are for many sufficient justification for preserving biodiversity independent of market value. The third category of value is the ecosystem service. The organisms that live, grow, reproduce and interact with in the ecosystem help to medi mediate local and regional flows of energy and material. Now energy flow refers to the capture of light energy by green plants and algae uh, for photosynthesis and then its dispersal as chemical energy throughout the food web of the plant or algal feeding animals predators and eventually decomposers. The flow of materials involving the recycling of carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus and other elements between living organisms and the air, water and soil. These biologically mediated energy and material flows contribute to many ecological or life support services that benefit human welfare in multiple ways such as green, grass, green gas regulation water treatment, erosion control, soil quality control and plant growth. Ecosystem services can also include cultural benefits such as religious, aesthetic, recreational or inspirational values that humans derive from their ecosystem as said by Pym and his colleagues in 1995. Determining whether biodiversity per se is important to ecosystem functioning has been difficult. Partly because of the factors such as habitat conversion that reduce local biodiversity also directly affects ecological processes masking the more subtle impacts of species loss on the functioning. 
Recent studies, however, have begun to shed considerable light on the issue. These studies have shown that ecosystems are indeed sensitive to the change in the numbers and kind of species found in the communities. The second thing that you need to know about this module is the ecosystem ecology. At present, ecological studies are made at ecosystem level and it has been one of the most recent developments in ecology, which is generally referred to as bioenergetic approach. At ecosystem level, the units of study are comparatively very large and they are indeed no practical units if nature is conceived as a single giant ecosystem, the biosphere. The overall view of this type of approach is that living organisms and their non-living environment are inseparable yet interrelated and they interact with each other. Keeping this view in mind, the term ecosystem was then proposed by A. G. Tansley in 1935 who derived this term, a system resulting from the integration of all the living and non-living factors of the environment. Therefore, he regarded ecosystem as including not only the organism complex but also the whole complex of the physical factors forming the environment. However, the idea of ecosystem is by no means so recent as allusions to the idea of unity of organisms and environment can be traced back to late 1800s. Any unit that includes all the organisms, that is the communities in a given area, interact with the physical environment so that the flow of the energy leads to clearly defined tropic structures, biotic diversity and material cycles, which simply means an exchange of material between living and non-living components. And within the system, they all together are known as the ecological system or the ecosystem. Look at figure one. It shows a generalized scheme of nutritional relationships, the food links among the living organisms of such a system. Keeping this in view, we may think of Earth we live upon as a giant ecosystem where abiotic and biotic components are constantly acting and reacting upon each other bringing forth the structure and the functional changes in it. This vast ecosystem biosphere as shown in figure 2 is however difficult to handle and thus for convenience we generally study nature by making its artificial subdivisions into units of smaller ecosystems. For example, terrestrial can be read as forest or desert, grasslands, man-engineered as croplands, Aquatic, aquatic in freshwater and marines and so on and so forth of different sizes. An ecosystem may thus be as, as small as a pond, a cropland or large as an ocean, a desert or a forest. It must be therefore remembered that these unit ecosystems are simply separated from each other with time and space but functionally they are all indeed linked with each other forming an, as in a one integrated whole. There exist practically no functional boundaries between them. The next figure depicts a generalized scheme of nutritional relationship among different biotic components of an ecosystem. The recent development in ecological studies has been undertaken besides the study of the structure, the similarities and differences in the food and the energy relationships among living components of the ecosystem that is generally referred to as bioenergetics approach in modern ecology. Modern is thus broadly defined as the study of ecosystems. As seen before, the figure 2 is representing diagrammatic representation of the basic types of ecosystem, all of which together constitute a giant ecosystem which we know as the biosphere. Note, in all center, the generalized scheme of the structure and function of any unit ecosystem of the biosphere is given. An ecosystem is an overall integration of whole mosaic of interacting organisms and their environment. It is normally an open system with a continuous but variable influx and loss of material and energy. It is basic functional unit with no limits of boundaries consisting of both biotic and abiotic components interacting with each other both necessary for maintenance of life upon earth. Thus an ecosystem represents the highest level of ecological integration which is energy based and this functional unit is capable of energy transformation, accumulation and then circulation. Its main function is an ecological sense. 
is to emphasize obligatory relationship, interdependence and causal relationships. What kinds of ecosystems do we need to study? The different types of ecosystems in nature constituting the ecosystem that you know, know as the biosphere as you've already seen in the figure. Many of them are artificially categorized as well. Let's see a few of them. The first one is the natural ecosystem. These are operated by themselves under natural conditions without any major interference by man. Based upon the type of the particular kind of habitat that one is dealing with, they are further divided into terrestrial, which includes the forest, grassland, deserts, and so on. The second one is aquatic. It is the word aquatic means the water open, which may be further distinguished as fresh water, which may be lotic running water as springs, streams or rivers, or lentic, a standing water body as lake, pond, puddles, ditches or swamps. The second type of aquatic system is a marine system which includes deep bodies as an ocean or shallow ones as a sea or estuaries, etc. The next one ecosystem that one needs to know about is the artificial or the man-engineered ecosystems. These are maintained artificially by man, whereby addition of energy and plant manipulation, natural balance is distributed regularly. For example, croplands like maize, wheat, rice, field, etc., where man tries to control the biotech community as well as the physical, chemical environment, are artificially based ecosystems. In addition to above, the rapid progress made during recent years led to the recognition of some other such types of ecosystems also known as the space ecosystem and with other examples. The fourth section that you need to understand in this module is the structure and the function of an ecosystem. The two main aspects of an ecosystem are the structure and the function. By structure, one basically means the composition of biological community including species, numbers, biomass, life history and the distribution of these species in space, etc. The quantity and distribution of the non-living materials such as nutrients, water, etc. are the second section that you need to understand. The third one is the range or the gradient of conditions of existence such as temperature, light, etc. What does function mean? The function actually means the rate of the biological energy that flows through the ecosystem. That is the production of respiration rates of the community. It should also include the rate of materials or nutrient life cycles, then biological ecological regulation including both regulation of organisms by environment, that is photoperiodism, and regulation of environment by the organism, like nitrogen fixing organism should also be included in this aspect. Therefore, in any ecosystem, structures and function, that is the rate functions are started together. The fifth section of this module has to deal with eco-sensitivity. The concept of an ecologically sensitivity or eco-sensitivity is appealing but difficult to interpret. Consequently, eco-sensitivity is among the most widely used terms with no uniquely accepted definition. In fact, eco-sensitivity is often considered synonymous to environmentally sensitive areas, environmentally sensitive zones, ecologically insensitive ecosystems, ecologically sensitive sites, etc. They depend on the context and the area of location of conservation interest. In most of these situations, the term used are without any specific definition or the variable meanings, which you will understand as shown in table 1. For this reason, while it is possible only to list a set of criteria that characterize eco-sensitivity, all of them will not be applicable in all the situations. One such criterion is that eco-sensitivity is expected to have low levels of resilience and hence is difficult to be recovered or restored if perturbed by external influences. Ecology expert panel set up by the Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India noted that world over a number of features are being used for identifying ecologically sensitive or eco-sensitivity in different contexts. In fact, several of these criteria refer more to the significance either ecological or economic than to the resilience of the locality. You'll see this in table 1. 
given that the ultimate purpose of identifying ecologically sensitivity or eco sensitivity is to promote your environment friendly management regimes and conservation of the ecology wealth of the sites, it is evidently necessary to consider features that define ecological and economic value. Along with the resilience of the locality while identifying ecologically sensitivity or eco-sensitivity areas. Therefore, following a country-wide consultation among experts and interested stakeholders, Ecology Expert Panel has attempted to re-evaluate the concept of eco-sensitivity area, redefine it for the purpose of hand and develop a consensus protocol for scoring levels of ecological significance and sensitivity, leading eventually to a mapping of eco-sensitivity area, the following protocol has been made. The given table displays the terminologies used and the attributes suggested to be used while assigning ecological salient scores or eco-sensitivity. The next section is going to deal with what is the ecologically sensitive area. Focusing on resilience, the Macmillan Dictionary defines an environmentally sensitive area as an area where the natural environment can easily be harmed. We may therefore employ this as a starting point to understand the definition of an ecologically sensitive area and define it as those ecological units that may be easily affected or harmed. However, for operational purposes, we need to also consider the significance and not just sensitivity and therefore would like to define ECAs as those areas that are ecologically and economically important but vulnerable even to the mildest disturbances and, and hence demand careful management. We consider ecologically and economically important areas as those areas that are biologically and ecologically rich, valuable and or unique are largely irreplaceable if destroyed. Furthermore, by virtue of their biological richness, they could be potentially of high value to human societies, help in maintaining the ecological stability of the area and be significant in conserving biological diversity. Similarly, their uniqueness may be recognized either by the rarity of the living systems they harbor, they are difficult to replace if lost, or by the uniqueness of the services they offer to human society. Their vulnerability could be determined by physiographic features that are prone to erosion or degradation under human and other influences, such as erratic climate and on the basis of historical experience. The Pronapsen Committee report that was given in 2000 shows that as that as well as several earlier attempts to define ECAs have been suggested these components are actually directly or indirectly super important resilience indeed we believe that there is consensus that ECAs shall not be ecologically sensitive areas but also ecologically economically and culturally significant in actual essence. Since sensitive and significant each has its specific connotations, it would be useful to employ another word for the broader concept. Such a word is salient, whose meaning includes relative importance based on the context. Therefore, we propose the use of the term ecologically salient areas in lieu of ecologically sensitive areas to capture both aspects while retaining the abbreviation as the ECA. Thus, in the ensuing pages, we use ECA in this sense and not refer merely to ecologically sensitive areas. Why ecologically sensitive areas? India has a rich history of natural conservation going back to prehistorical times. These traditions follow mainly criteria that are being proposed today as the basis of ECA, such as sacred forests, protecting origins of rivers. For example, Bhima Shankar in Pune district, Maharashtra at the origin of Bhima River or important breeding habitats, example, Kokre, Bellur, Pelikanri in Mandya district of Karnataka. In modern times, we have established a substantial set of conservation sites such as biosphere reserves, national parks and wildlife sanctuaries that constitute a fairly effective network of protected areas, the PAS, for conserving biological diversity and natural habitats. Most of these tend to 
the large forested areas identified for their conservation because they harbor high levels of biological diversity, flagship species or unique landscape elements. However, except in certain areas such as a few biosphere reserves, demarcation of the areas for their conservation program was not based on any scientific or, or any large scale consultation involving diverse stakeholders. Rather, more often than not, they have been identified either on the basis of the understanding of the forest managers or on the basis of historical contingencies. Let's take for an example the Royal Hunting Grounds, historically known places for certain species such as lions, buffers of reservoirs, so on and so forth. Nevertheless, the demarcated areas have been quite effective in attaining the goals of the conservation programs in the post-independence period, notwithstanding the repeated conflicts emerging between local communities and managers in the several areas and distinct limitations in some areas for effective conservation of the local species such as lack of the most essential corridors between certain PAs for large animals such as elephants. We therefore need ECAs to complement the PA network to correct the bias and bring in flexible people-oriented management systems. We now have to move on to understanding the demarcating ecologically sensitive areas. There are three important attributes to that need to be considered in defining ecological salience, significance, sensitivity of an area. The first one is the physioclimatic feature or the geoclimatic feature biological feature or social relevance including the cultural, economic and historical importance of the given area. All these may be grouped as the abiotic features, the biotic features and lastly as anthropological or socio-cultural attributes. Such attributes have been suggested and are used by other workers also. But we are not aware of any structured protocol for using these attributes to arrive at an ecologically sensitive area. It's now time to understand the biological attributes. Now demarcation of an ESA shall consider the following components of biological and cultural uniqueness and richness. Biodiversity richness. What is biodiversity richness? Richness and diversity for all taxon taxonomic groups and hierarchies. What is species rarity? Rarity in terms of population size, extent of geographical distribution, also rarity in taxonomic representation in terms of paucity of closely related taxa. The next term you need to understand is the habitat richness. It is the spatial heterogeneity of landscape elements. We need to understand what is productivity. It is simply the total biomass of productivity. Now, estimation of ecological resilience can be done by understanding level of persistence of original climax vegetation. The next term you need to know and you will come across is the cultural and historical significance of the whole idea. Evolutionary historical value and cultural historical value of the area needs to be understood. The geoclimatic layers of attributes are the next term that you need to understand. These include layers that permit assessment of the innate or the natural vulnerability of the area. Obviously, features such as slope, aspect, altitude, precipitation, etc. shall be used under the following component attributes. Topographic features, which includes the slope, altitude, aspect, etc. The next is the climatic features, the precipitation, number of wet days, etc. Hazard vulnerability can also be understood as one of its aspects. Natural hazards such as landslides and fires cannot be excluded. Stakeholders valuation is the importance that you take on as both perception of the civil society and local bodies, especially the Zilla, the Taluka and the Gram Panchayat to decide on the areas that they consider to be ecologically and environmentally sensitive. Of course, these perceptions will depend on the proposed management regime as well. The module can therefore be summarized into the following points. The first is that you need to understand that the most striking feature of the Earth's bio biota is the 
ordinary diversity estimated to include about the 10 million different species that we have talked about. On a global scale, even at the lowest estimated current extinction rate, about half of all species could be extinct within a hundred years. On local and regional scales, therefore, biodiversity tends to decline and has already pronounced in many areas. The areas of Earth, the Earth's living organism contributes to human welfare in variety of ways. Humans derive from them goods and products essential for life. Biodiversity has a non-market value that can be expressed in terms of knowledge, aesthetics, experience and other values. The organisms that live, grow, reproduce and interact with an ecosystem help to mediate local and regional flows of energy and materials. These biologically mediated energy and material flows contribute to many ecological and life support services that benefit human welfare. At present, ecological studies are made at ecosystem level and it has been one of the most recent developments in ecology. The term ecosystem was proposed by A. G. Tansley in 1935. The next thing that you need to remember is that the parallel terms as biocoinsources, microcosm, geobioconsources, holocene, biosystem, bioinert body and ecosomatic use are used for such ecological studies. An ecosystem may thus be as small as a pond or a cropland or as large as an ocean, desert or forest. An ecosystem is an overall integration of all mosaic of interacting organisms and their environment. There are different types of ecosystem in the nature constituting the giant ecosystem known as the biosphere. Natural ecosystems operate by themselves under natural conditions without any major interference by the man. Artificial man-engineered ecosystems are maintained artificially by man. What is ecosensitivity? It is often considered a synonym to eco environmentally sensitive areas, environmentally sensitive zones, ecologically sensitive ecosystems and ecologically sensitive sites. The Ministry of Environment and Forest, Government of India has noted that world over a number of features are, features are being used for identifying ecological sensitivity for, or ecosensitivity in different contexts. The ultimate purpose of identifying ecologically sensitive or ecosensitivity is to promise environment friendly management regimes and conservation of the ecological wealth of the sites. The next point you need to remember is the environmentally sensitive area as an, is an area where the natural environment can easily be harmed. Also known as the ECAs are being now proposed as not merely as sensitive areas but also ecologically significant areas. The marcation of the areas for this conservation program was not based on any scientific data is, except for the biosphere. There are three important categories of attributes that need to be considered in defining the ecological salience, also known as the ecological significance or the sensitivity of this area. Thank you.